so, sobriety, people act like sobriety is black and white. You, when you're sober, you have to be, you have to, you can't do any drugs, and like all this shit, and like blah, 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 blah. But it's like, people look at it differently. Like, people experience sobriety differently. I mean, that's just my two fucking cents. There's two cents, that was his. I'm proud of you. So I wanted this to really be an open conversation about what is in the title, obviously, and that's sobriety. To me, this is going to be a very sensitive topic for some people, and everybody's perception of sobriety is completely different. I call myself sober for many different reasons than somebody else will. I, as you will find out, I'm sober by choice. I chose that at a very young age, but I know that people are driven to sobriety from things like addiction, religion, you know, maybe for fun, <laughs> to keep it spooky, I don't know. And I hope this is a video message for anybody out there that feels like they may not have any sober friends because when I was a little bit younger, I felt like nobody else was gonna choose to be sober like me, but guess what the hell happened? I have the closest knit group of friends that are all sober. Not all of them are sober, excuse me. <laughs> but I've got a lot of incredible sober friends who are sober for very different reasons. And this is my experience with sobriety. I wanna show you my story of why I'm sober, how it can be pretty crazy being 20 years old and sober, and how a lot of people are shocked that it's my choice. So I grew up in a world that was really just young, wild, and free, and my parents were getting it to the left and then getting it to the right. In that childhood of being so young, wild, and free, little baby boy Jake saw some things that were a little premature for a child. I, at a young age, realized that I had a choice. I could be like the others around me, or I could choose something very concrete to drink or not to drink. Little baby boy Jake made a choice that I'm still very proud of to this day, which was to not drink. I was led very much by the actions of others, and that's where I differentiate myself from a lot of other people. And a lot of people ask this to this day is why I still don't drink. Yes, as a young man, I didn't start getting into drinking. Maybe I could have waited till I was 21, but I am 25 now and I still do not drink. Why is that? I've come to a point where it's no longer much about the traumatizing experiences. I have a good amount of confidence in myself that I wouldn't fall into a path of addiction. But I think now I just see the benefits of sobriety. Reason number one why I'm sober. I would say, looking to my peers, I save a shitload of coin. I can go out, live it up with my main mamacitas. I'm spending zero coin. Count it, zero coin. I'm at a blackjack table. Zero coin is given. I'm getting drinks at the bar. I'm getting ginger ale. I'm getting Sprite. I'm getting a water water. And then maybe a Red Bull if I'm feeling wild. But I'm not spending $100 in a night on a tab for that Alki Alki, that ALC Ouija well, L, L. L L L L. <laughs> so that's pretty fucking turnt. If you think about it, I'm saving so much coin, but my coin is also going to frozen pizza at Target, so. <sighs> that's an issue. <laughs> okay, reason number two. I think a lot of mamacitas would agree with this, but there's something a little spooky about not having full control of yourself or your zaddy. I like that. I could not imagine being blackout drunk. I have heard the stories, I have talked to the mamacitas about it, and it just sounds like a spooky ass experience. A reason I just thought about, top of the tippy ted, I know a lot of people who cut out alcohol for health reasons. It's turnt as hell when it comes to health. It keeps this body <laughs> and it's real on your liver. So, if we have any fellow sober people watching this video, I'm sure you've had that experience walking into a party before. Somebody's trying to hand you a drink. Maybe they're trying to flirt and they're trying to get you a drink. And you let them know, I'll take that soda. I'll take that water. I may take a kombucha if I'm feeling crazy. But the idea is when you answer with something that's not alcoholic, I get a reaction. It's not always bad at all, but there's always a reaction. It is a valid pinpoint that starts a conversation that basically makes me state that I don't drink or I have to give a reason why I'm not drinking that night. Even if some people have decided to be sober for a night at a party, I'm sure you've experienced that. So maybe that's hashtag relatable, but there is a stigma when you tell somebody you're sober. 
A lot of people these days, in my eyes, have taken it well. It could be because I live in a great city. It could be because I'm being introduced to really awesome people. But I let people know I'm sober. And a lot of them are like, good for you. A lot of them also say, God, I wish I had the self-discipline. I understand how odd it can be socially to walk into a party sober when our society is built on going to a party and reorganizing your social structure with alcohol all the way through it. I can understand where that is just frightening to some people. How would I ever walk into a party sober? I've had it told to me before. I've had so much experience in the beginning. It was a little aggravating. It felt like I was being judged. Today, it's a part of who I am. It's been my identity for a long time. People can really be flabbergasted. People can think you're missing out, but I think once they see how you are well and free, I get at that party, they have no question to why I don't drink. If anything, they might comment, I'm pretty fucking glad Jake doesn't drink. Because <laughs> if he did, I wouldn't have a foundational support wall in my apartment. But I want you to think about how you're socializing with your favorite mamacitas when you're doing a GNI at a girls night in. You're, you're being social, you're having a fun ass time. And somewhere in that night, when you're in your comfort zone, you are being fully yourself. Think about doing those things, having that complex out in public with people you don't know. It's possible, you can achieve it. It's the sober way of getting fucked up, I'd say. <laughs> so that's why whenever I make that joke about being fucked up, I have never been. <laughs> I'm fraudulent, so <laughs> just remember that. Hey, or this is here. a great point. Everybody thinks I will judge them if they drink. Can I talk about how that's not true? It's as if I judged you for what you decided to eat, who you decided to have sex with. If I judged you for that, I would not have time for myself. I think most sober people wouldn't give a rat's ass. If anything, I think a lot of sober people have their own lane. I personally see it as everybody has their own vices. I have my own vices. Whatever you decide to do, is so you, unless you're trying to harm someone, unless you're trying to peer pressure somebody into doing something, which I think we've all been. Everybody's in their own lane and I'll continue to feel that way and I'll continue not to cast judgment on that. I want the healthiest out of everybody. I mean, do I stereotype? You bet your ass. Straight men, crappier. Live your fucking life. That's how I'm gonna say everything. Like, do you. I'm gonna do me. If you love me for it, good. <laughs> This is a question I get all the time, and I really love it because I love thinking about my future. People ask me all the time, will I ever drink? I have no idea where my mind will be in a year. I have no idea where my mind will be in three years. I got a tattoo earlier this year, and if you ask me that same question about getting a tattoo three months before I got a tattoo, my answer in a dumb way would probably have been, probably not. I can sit here and say right now, I probably won't, but who the hell knows. I do think since I've been sober for 25 years, I've made my way through my young 20s sober. I'm probably past the peer pressure point and or the curiosity point to drink. Since I made it past that and I've seen what I've seen and every point has be, been reinforced as to why I'm sober, I'm probably gonna remain sober. Well, I don't know if I've ever talked about this out loud. What do my friends and family think of me not drinking? My friends and family are <laughs> mostly sober at this point, so they're kind of like rock on, rock on today. I have never gotten judgment from my family. If anything, it's been wild amounts of support. I think they always thought it was a very smart decision, especially based on all of our past experiences. Sobriety is a big identity of mine that I have chosen, and if I stand by it with complete genuine intentions. I think no matter what, people will be attracted to that and will support it. So, so we're gonna just try calling people and I'm gonna say that we're filming a YouTube video and we'll see the responses I get. Pray to the Lord you hear my speaker phone. So we're gonna call one of my good friends, Johnny. He's a mamacita for sure. And I do know that he likes to partake in casual alcohol use. <laughs> What was that one? Um, D.A.R.E. What was the D.A.R.E. acronym? Drug Awareness Resistance Education. Wow, I just pulled that out of my ass. He's probably at the gym. So we're cute. We'll maybe talk to Johnny at some point in the future. I don't know. Let's give a call to Reed. Reed drinks V casually. And when I say that, very low amount of alcohol. Oh, answers. I 
You answered after like one ring. God, what a real friend. Okay, so I'm filming a video as we speak. You're live on the scene, Channel 4 Action News. I wanted to ask you a question. So I'm making a video about sobriety, right? And I wanted to ask you, Phoebe, can we give it one quick cue? She's just a thirsty bitch. I'm eating garbanzo beans, is that okay? That's absolutely okay. I'd actually rather you eat some cottage cheese. I know you are sober in certain aspects of your life, but you do partake in the casual kiss kiss a drink. So, I wanted to speak to a drinker about how you feel about people who are sober. I, okay. I hear those garbanzo beans deep in your mouth. <laughs> I don't know, I get really hung up on all like the vernacular of it. That's a great ass example actually, because yeah. people completely define their sobriety in wildly different ways, right? So they'll be like, well I'm completely sober of drug use, or I'm completely sober of drugs and alcohol, but I do partake in weed. I know a few people like that. Yeah. It's absolutely whatever your perception wants to be on the top. Well, it's been great talking to you. No, to <laughs> Let me ask you one question then. Okay. Do you ever experience a stigma when you tell people that you do not partake in drug use? Oh, absolutely. And I, I feel like, I don't know if it's me projecting onto people, like my insecurity is projecting onto like what I think how people are responding, if that makes sense. But I, absolutely. When I tell people like, you know, I had it yeah, like when I tell people I had like an issue with drugs in the past, like they sometimes like give you looks. Like I even had an experience this weekend where I was like, Yeah, I don't drink and like the person jokingly said, Oh, we wouldn't get along. Oh I was like you know, I was out at Cinco de Mayo and I ordered water and they were like, Are you not drinking? And I was like, No, I'm not a big drinker and he was like like I don't know if we'd get along and I was just like he didn't he didn't realize how he meant it. Because what's so funny is we've touched on in this video already that when you signify that you're not drinking that night or that you don't drink at all, there seems to be this double layered of judgment where it's you feel judged for the choice and then they may feel judged by you for the fact <laughs> that you don't drink. It's, I don't know, it's, it's a whole toss up but I'm just trying to have an open conversation about it because maybe I'll speak a couple of truths. But I'm gonna let you go because I'm actually gonna call a couple more people. I love you, and do I have your consent to use you in this video? Am I gonna be, like, de-identified? Absolutely not. I have not said your name. Let's give a call to Reed. So we just talked to one of my favorite mamacitas on the phone. They gave a little bit of their opinion about what it means to be sober and the judgment that can come from that. This was not a video to just go in depth about when you're sober, you get judged. The reason I wanted to talk about this is for anybody out there who feels the same, who chose to be sober, who's sober because of something else. Maybe they don't have really many peers around them that are sober. Maybe you're in a small town. I don't know. It could be anything. But I wish I had a friend. I wish I had a video like this to reach out to me. And I want to start the conversation. Is this something that we're going to see a lot more of in the future? Is this something that the world might call trendy? I don't know. But I wanted to have a sit down, just me and you. I would love your feedback. I'd love to hear from anybody else that feels the same. If this spoke any truth to you at all, please share it. Please love it. Spread the word. And remember, you can still be so young, wild, and free and have sobriety by your side. Hey, I'm Jake from Jake Jones and you're watching the Pumpkin Channel.